Hi, in this chapter, we learn how to use EIS updated to send over the air updates so that we can share previews with your team fast. All right, so in this chapter, we're going to be following this amazing guide that we have here that will guide you step by step on how to share previews with your team. Over the air updates allow you to send updates without going through the App Store review process. Now, it's important to understand that when we're using updates, we can only update JavaScript code. So if you change native code from your application, you're going to need to create a new build. But for JavaScript changes, we can use updates. So the first thing that we need to do to use EAS updates is installing the Expo updates library. So back to our project, let's clear the terminal and install Expo updates. The next thing that we need to do is to configure EAS update. This is very important, especially because we are using a dynamic app config file. So adding updates and runtime version properties are required to make our project compatible with EAS update. So let's run this command to configure that EAS update configure. And as you can see, because we're using a dynamic configuration, it, it would be risky if the CLI comes here and tries to change the configuration, right? So instead, they are providing us the configuration that we need to pass so that we can configure update. So let's go ahead and do that. I will put this just before the owner. And by the way, this is JSON, so we need to change this to be a regular JavaScript object. If I type updates, for example, I get uh, the fully typed uh, configuration that can pass that we can pass in here. So the important part is going to be the URL, which is specific to this project. And the CLI gave me this, right? So I just need to do that. And then we need to specify the runtime version policy. And in this case, I'm setting this to the app version, which means that we're going to be using this version to target and make sure that updates are going to be compatible with um, the native code that it's, it's already in the device, right? So for example, let's say that I installed the version 1.0.1 and the runtime policy version, it's a different one. That means that the update might not be compatible with the current version that the user has installed. So to prevent crashes and bugs in production, we need to make sure that the build that the user has installed, it's compatible with the update that we're sending. And this runtime policy is going to be in charge of that. All the updates that, I, that I'm going to be sending are going to be compatible with this version. But if I change native code, I'm going to increase this to be 1.1, 1 .1, 1 .1, and that, and then I have to create a new build, and then um, that I will need to go through the App Store. But after that, um, all the updates are going to be compatible with 1.0.1. .1. So I hope that it, that explanation makes makes sense. Uh, you can learn more in the Expo docs, by the way. So if you don't have a dynamic configuration file, this command should update your app.json file. So you don't have to do that manually. Now we need to update our EAS JSON. I already added my runtime uh, version and updates, which means I can rerun the same command EAS update configure. And now because I already have these values, this is going to configure my uh, EAS.json file. So this is assigning a channel to each build profile, as you can see. So the channel for updates is going to be development for my development profile. For iOS simulator, it's going to be iOS simulator. And for preview, it's going to be preview and so on and so forth. So after this configuration, we need to create a new build, right? And this build is going to have configured at this point, the EAS update. So I'm going to create this build for iOS since I already have my real device in here. So let's go ahead and kick off this build. The profile is going to be development. I'm going to hit enter. So my build is in progress. I'll go ahead and create a new build for production because right now all the builds that I have installed on my device, and let me show you, which is dev, preview, and the production one are not compatible with EAS update because we didn't have the dependency at the time. So let's go ahead and create a new build for iOS and I will auto submit this build. So let's go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to provide my Apple credentials. And now this is in progress. We only need to wait a little bit. Okay guys, so after a moment, my development build is ready and I have here the QR code. And on my other terminal, my production build is ready as well. So let's go ahead and install the production build first. So I'll go to test light and then I can see the update. So I'll update my split is prod 
application that at this point is compatible with Expo updates and can receive over the air updates. So that's it. I can open it just to make sure that it's working. I'm going to delete this dev client build and then I'm going to go to my builds in my Expo dashboard and I'm going to find this development build that I created just a moment ago. So let's click on installed and I will scan this QR code. All right, so back to my screen, I'm going to show you how this looks. I'm going to click on install and now we are installing a new dev client that has Expo updates configured. So uh, we have the development server running. Let's go ahead and open this because I reinstalled this. Let me go ahead and sign in and close this. Um, so let's go ahead and click on extensions. And now uh, something cool here, we have this extension for updates and me as a teammate, let's say I'm able to see this uh, development build that was created on the branch development. So let's press on this. We get more details about the build, like, of, like the message, and then we can open this build. So I'm going to open this and press continue. So this is basically connected to the Expo server that contains this specific update and I can even reload and this is how it looks. So I can see the update even in, in, even if in my local, I still have this change, right? So basically I'm connected to the Expo server and you can shake to bring the menu again reload, go home. So this is how you can quickly share updates with your teammates. But now let's test this in the production app. So if you remember, we also created a production build, which means that uh, we have the latest update in here with split ease, right? So I already installed the version and the production version actually contains the test text, right? So for a production update, what we can do is just delete this and trigger a new uh, update. So I'll quit this terminal and I'll say EAS update. And then let's change the branch to be production. And my message is going to be fix text. So let's hit enter and let's see how long it's going to take. So it's going to start by exporting the JavaScript code. And then this is going to be deployed to the production one. So it's uploading right now. And after a couple seconds, uh, we can see that the update now is ready. Now to apply an update, you can actually learn more in the Expo documentation, uh, more in more detail how to do it with a button and how to show an alert to the user. But by default, ES update is going to download the update the next time that the user launches the app. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's launch the app. So at this point, I can see the test text, right? So this means that in this launch, EIS update is detecting this update and is downloading it and it's going to be applied the next time that I open the application. So let's close the app and let's open again and the update it's applied. So as you can see, you can actually customize this. For example, as soon as you detect an update, you can show an alert to the user telling them, okay, there's an update. Do you want to update now? Please press this button. And once you press this button, you can call update, apply the update. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you can just um, let the user close the app and reopen the app and the update is going to be automatically applied. So back to my dashboard, I'm going to go to my updates and then select deployments. So I can see my deployment to production, which is fixed test and my deployment to development. So we have plenty of information about updates in the Expo dashboard. So you can continue exploring and see um, all the details about your deployments. And that's it for this chapter. We learned how to share updates with teammates, as well as how to ship and deploy updates to a production environment to do quick fixes. I hope you like this chapter. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.